I actually found out recently that my roommate thought it was nerve herter. <laughs> I was like, what? Oh, that's that's even better. But he's better. just gone most of his life thinking it was that. <laughs> Welcome to Second Opinion, the reviews show here on The Nexus. I am your host, Ian R. Buck, and today I will be joined by Daniel Poole, Mike Sandberg, and Quentin Pongratz, so we can talk about Solo, a Star Wars story. Find the show notes for this episode at thenexus.tv slash SO43. Now, before we get too far into this, uh, I want to reassure everybody that we're structuring this episode so that we have uh, all of our spoiler-free stuff right here at the top, uh, and then we'll let you know well in advance. We'll have, you know, a whole musical interlude or something uh, before we start getting into spoilers. So, um, Also, since there's a whole four of us, uh, I think everybody should probably go around and uh, say your name so that everybody can distinguish who the heck we are. <laughs> all right, I'm Mike. From Kentucky. That's all you need to know. <laughs> I'm Daniel. I'm from Oklahoma. I don't know if that gives you anything. <laughs> and and I'm Quentin, also from Daniel. Oh. <laughs> Daniel, <laughs> from, <laughs> from his <Son>? lineage? <laughs> Yeah, they looked on uh, Ancestry and <laughs> found out that uh, they were actually long-lost cousins. Who knew? <laughs> You know, in my family, that's that's completely possible. Well, at least you guys both have more family than Han Solo. <laughs> this is true. So. <laughs> so, how did you guys feel about uh, about this movie? I regret to inform everyone that the Solo apologist has logged on because I really love this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I found it. I found it very refreshing uh, coming off of our you know the the main star wars movies that they're currently making i i did not really enjoy um the force awakens and the last jedi um but i really liked rogue one and i really liked solo so i'm almost thinking that i should probably like start skipping all the main ones and just go and see like the anthology movies yeah i this one i, I just sort of enjoyed you know it's one of those movies where I, it's i i don't feel like it's very memorable but and it, and it wasn't disgustingly bad or anything like that. It just was right there in the middle where movies shouldn't be, and that's just mm. average. I'd rather it be really good or really bad. I Just average, lukewarm is not good enough for a Star Wars movie. So you want them to like remake uh, the holiday special? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, if, if it's going to be bad, make it really bad. <laughs> and if, Battle on Endor needs a CGI remake. Come on. Yeah. <laughs> But yeah, I didn't fall asleep. That's that's my barometer right there. So if I fall asleep, that's usually a really bad movie. So See, I think I landed on average when I first came out of the theater. Like not bad, not good, mostly forgettable. But then as I thought about it more, I went, I think I'm only upgrading it because it's a Star Wars movie, and I think it's actually just bad. <laughs> huh. Man, I <laughs> now I'm really nervous because like <laughs> when I was in the theater, I kept like I I kept saying out loud to Savannah like, "Damn, I love this movie. This is such a good movie." <laughs> <laughs> well, with Rogue One, I didn't like it at all the first time I saw it. And then oh, yeah? the second time I saw it, I loved it. It's it's probably my my favorite of the new Star Wars movies. Mm -hmm. And I don't think Solo will be that way. I I, I feel like Solo I just didn't have you know I, I i understand everything that's going on and i don't feel like it's going to get better on second viewings but mm. i'll give it a chance i'll give it a shot <laughs> see i was kind of the reverse where i mean I've, i saw rogue one a couple of times in the theater but watching it and thinking about it i was like well that was a thing i mean it was a good thing but oh yeah I don't know. yeah don't get me wrong that movie had its flaws as well like but um I certainly enjoyed it more than the seven and eight movies. Yeah, and I, I, I almost wonder if like the reason that I liked Solo so much was because it didn't do a lot of the things that I like absolutely dislike about the core movies that are coming out right now, which is like coming out with like universe altering rules. You know, um, they didn't they didn't break any rules in in Solo. Um, 
they like it, it was it was much more lighthearted you know like the stakes the stakes were much lower here uh which i think was probably refreshing for me because i like i f- like being immersed in this in the star wars universe so much like i don't need the next big super weapon you know i like i'm i'm craving a few more just like kind of stories that that don't affect the rest of the universe but that i can get you know invested in yeah you you're right about that i, I kind of feel like it 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 wasn't trying to be like this huge big bombastic movie like it stayed kind of it, it was a smaller adventure film mm-hmm. and um it it was definitely grittier than your normal average Star Wars movie a little bit. Um, it, it it was definitely shot darker. Like, it wasn't a bright yeah. and vibrant picture. There was a lot of parts in the movie where it was kind of dark, and it was hard to f- figure out what was going on <laughs> in the frame. Um, but, you know, it, it, it kind of made the whole uh, tone of the movie feel kind of off, because you're like, is this supposed to be a very serious movie, or... Is it supposed to be lighthearted, kind of like Han Solo? He's kind of a, a you know, a quirky, not quirky, but like a sarcastic uh, guy. So, right, yeah, because like, yeah, so many of the of the the places that they're in are like really just dirty, mucky, like. Like I just, I was feeling a little uncomfortable just seeing all, you know, how dirty people were. I was like, oh, just go take a shower, please. <laughs> Yeah, it, so I I really like the military scenes though. Those those were cool. You mm-hmm. don't see that much in in Star Wars movies. Like Star Wars is in the title, but there's not mm. very many actual military scenes. And this had a couple cool looking ones that kind of reminded me of World War One almost. Yeah. yeah, and especially especially like military scenes that don't involve like stormtroopers, right? In the core movies, we see so much of the stormtroopers because they are the elite of the elite. Um, and so that's the reason that they're the ones who are always going up against like our main characters. But in in real, okay, I was about to say in reality. Uh, <laughs> in the- <laughs> this is how deep I am in this universe, you guys. <laughs> like, it, if you go, if you randomly select a battlefield that is taking place in the Star Wars universe, right? You're probably not going to find stormtroopers because they're just like vastly, vastly more of these regular imperial troops uh who aren't the elite um and so like yeah i i found it really refreshing to see things kind of from their perspective and it was not glamorous (laughs) (laughs) no and this is one of the first star wars movies also that i've seen that didn't have a kind of kind of like rogue one didn't have a lot of the uh fantastical elements like uh lightsaber Mm -hmm. duels and almost magical things like this was more like regular people and you know in a regular world <laughs> it, yeah it could yeah. have been it, it didn't even have to be a star wars movie it could have been any movie any movie with hyperspace and kessel runs uh, yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's true <laughs> but it didn't feel star warsy that much like i didn't feel like i was watching a star wars movie that's i don't know if that makes yeah. sense at Man. all but I, I think it totally does yeah because like the the mysticism of like the jedi has been a huge part of like the star Wars mythos. And, um, personally it's been a a part of the star Wars mythos that I've really gotten tired of. (laughs) (laughs) Um, you know, like, like when the clone wars, uh, you know, era was going on, I was getting very interested in stories that were, that were told from the perspective of like, okay, here's some Jedi. And they're like really questioning a lot of like the rules that the Jedi order has, you know, around like, uh, especially around, um, romantic relationships and stuff, and of course, authors were exploring that because of like the whole um, Anakin and Padme thing. Um, but you know, like I, I was like, oh yeah, this I can totally see like these members of this order like like going against that kind of thing because it's freaking ridiculous. <laughs> and I did see in your notes you kind of mentioned the show Firefly. Yes, and I, and I can yeah. kind of see this movie almost would fit in a Firefly universe more than a Star Wars universe, almost in my the, head. There was a, especially there was about like a thirty minute section of the movie that I was just like, oh my god, oh my god, this is the this is the crew of the fire of the of Serenity, oh my god, <laughs> <laughs> and like the situation that they were in was very Firefly, and like I I was just I was so on board. 
<laughs> yeah, it's space western. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. I just wish it had leaned into those things more. It felt like overall it kind of generified the plot. I think from the background of it being one director or uh, two directors previously and then Ron Howard getting it, it kind of felt like it was handed off at some point. <laughs> well, I think that's the biggest issue is it never chooses its direction hard enough. Like you you can see it almost making it to whatever it wants to be. Yeah. You know, and then it would it would veer off to the side like a little too far. Like if it leaned harder into the comedy or if it leaned harder into the heist, I think I really would have loved it, but it just kind of like sits in the middle. Yeah, mm-hmm. exactly. That's what we were saying earlier. Like the it just feels like it's just in the middle. It doesn't have much of its own yeah. identity. I, I was pretty nervous at the beginning when they immediately introduced like, hey, there's this fuel that's needed for like these big <laughs> warships and it's very valuable. And I was like, uh, okay. <laughs> like this is going to be central to everything that happens in this movie and we're never going to hear about it ever again in the entire universe. <laughs> yeah. yeah, they never talk about this fuel ever. Um, Which I've, was, you know, kind of the same thing that happened in Rogue One. Kyber crystals. Okay, they're really important for now. <laughs> yeah, they got to fit something in there to make the plot. Um, yeah, you're right. The the comedy side, I feel like the reason why they fired the original directors is because they, they basically said they made this movie into a comedy. Like, the movie was a comedy with them. Yeah. And so whatever reshoots and cutting they did, they basically gutted the lightheartedness out of it for the most part. There was a robot that was semi-funny. Oh, I loved her. (laughs) But yeah, yeah, I didn't get any, like, hearty laughs out of this movie. Yeah, it was kind of like muffled chuckles. (laughs) Yeah, yeah, just, well, to be fair, I haven't really, I I didn't really get any laughs out of many of the Star Wars movies recently at all, but. Mm. I think there were a lot of, like, characters in this movie that i really really liked more than than other star wars movies that have come out recently um you know like the the robot that you mentioned was one um the the pilot guy uh who is in beckett's crew oh you're um, you talking about uh basically a rocket raccoon uh, ripoff sure well <laughs> i mean i was thinking of him more as wash because like that was you know he, <laughs> that was when we were in the firefly section of the movie <laughs> <laughs> yeah but yeah um, and actually, I, that does bring me to casting. I think that the the casting was really good in this movie, um, and they did what like I think Star Wars does really really well, which is like taking actors who I've never seen before, I've never heard of them before, you know, and um, and put them into roles that become really memorable. Um, of course, we you know we we have a few people who have definitely seen before, like Donald Glover, um, but he was great as Lando, yeah. you know. Um, Woody Harrelson, I I kept looking at him and I was like, where have I seen you before? Where have what? I seen? Oh yeah, it was it was Zombieland. <laughs> Ian, you need to watch more movies, buddy. But I I thought Woody was a good addition, but he he was like in parts he was great, but then in other parts mm-hmm. it felt like he was like phoning it in a little bit. Hmm. Like I, I felt like well, he was flat. They casted him as Space Woody, though. <laughs> so it's not like he had a lot to go on anyway. Yeah. I wonder if he even knew he was on set. Like, that's, here's that's, a gun, just go that way. That's true. And he was... A, He's just wearing the same jacket that he <laughs> wore to work. Yeah. He was a little bit one-dimensional as well. Like, he, he, it's one of those things where he... You, you knew exactly what he was going to do. He, he didn't do anything surprising at all. And... You, you didn't they tried to make you like him but in the end he's just not likable like he doesn't <laughs> do anything like uh, you why would you want to empathize with this guy basically what i'm saying well see i i had a different take because during the scene where they're talking about is this well, a spoiler this maybe a little spoilery <laughs> there's some scenes where they set up his motivations yeah and by the end of the movie you see how far he was willing to take things to get those motivations mm. so for me he kind of grew on me as he went along i guess he's at first i was like a selfish character he's a selfish person yeah and it's hard but to he's very upfront about a selfish that person like a person who's just about themselves yeah i've got a spoilery nitpick that i'll save for the second half but okay um speaking of of selfish characters i felt like han himself was not very <laughs> 
well fleshed out in this movie. <laughs> well, he like, wasn't selfish enough. Yeah, he could have been more selfish. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. He's like, got a whole <laughs> character arc to become unselfish later. <laughs> he needs to be more selfish. <laughs> yeah. Can we dial down the douche on Woody? Dial up the douche on Harrison. <laughs> Um, yeah, and, and like, like I understand that this is supposed to be a movie about, like, oh, this is how Han kind of became his, like, jaded self, but the arc almost felt, like, opposite of that. Yeah, he actually didn't really have an arc, I don't think. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He, he doesn't learn much. He doesn't learn much at all. Basically, he just learns don't trust people. Yeah, and he meets Chewie. I don't think that's a spoiler. The, big, was- the biggest thing I, I think that's odd about this movie is... They go out of their way to explain every small detail about Han Solo oh. that doesn't need to be explained <laughs> at all. Like, we don't need to know how he got his last name. That doesn't need to be explained. <laughs> we don't need to know why he uh, can talk to his Wookiee friend, Chewbacca. That doesn't need to be explained. <laughs> like, they, well, and here's the thing: they did. They didn't even explain that. No, they, they just didn't. like he was just like, oh yeah, I I speak some true Wook. Like, no no big deal. <laughs> that was so dumb. That, <laughs> And minor nitpick here, they put subtitles for his Wookiee and no <laughs> not and no Chewbacca. other Wookiee utterances. And that's just oh, a God. little minor style thing, like either subtitle all of it or none of it. Yeah, it's a mess. Oh, that, <laughs> I did, there, there was one moment where like Chewbacca started talking for like a, a, <laughs> a fairly extended amount of time, and I was like, are, wait, are we just going to do like... A holiday special here and have a five minute scene that's just Wookiees. I feel like that's gotta be a remnant of when it was full on comedy. Yeah. Just having full on <laughs> Wookiee conversations would have been great yeah. comedy. But I just don't understand why do they need to explain all these little things that don't need to be explained. It takes away from the actual movie itself. Like yeah. all these things happen in this short period of time. He got his last name, he got his gun. He got his best friend. He uh, learned how to, you know, be a thief. <laughs> I, yeah. I don't know. That was a nitpick I had because it's just a laundry list of things that we need to cover that yeah. are just solo things. <laughs> Though I'm going to defend the name because the name of the movie is Solo and bringing up how that came about was really great. I don't know. <laughs> I mean, it, I love that little that little bit. You I mean, like that scene? I thought that was great. Oh, my like, God. But that's the first one that comes up, and I was like, oh, that's cool. And then they started the laundry list, and I was like, oh, It's bad, because okay. it pulls you out of the movie experience. Like, it, like every single time they tick one of those boxes of, this is how this happens, like, you get removed from the movie, and you're like, oh, yeah, uh, that's how that pieces in with the uh, other movies. And it it takes you out of it. I, get, I mean, on the other hand, like, if you're having a conversation with somebody who you know is a certain way, right? And then they, like, tell you the story about, you know, why, the, like, how they got that idiosyncrasy or whatever. Like, that, you know, that's not going to take you out of the story. Like, that's... <laughs> yeah, but there's... It's just kind of natural. There's also the thing of no one asked how, why Han calls Chewbacca Chewie, but <laughs> but they felt the need to go, you know what, that name's too long. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's... Uh, oh, my God. Well, because we would have accepted it if he just said Chewie. Yeah. Like, we wouldn't have... Yeah. Nicknames are a we thing. We didn't need to have that question <laughs> answered. Yeah, nicknames are a thing, and they had to explain what a nickname was in the movie. <laughs> I can think of an even better reason for him to have called him Chewie, uh, but this is a little bit of a spoiler. <laughs> <laughs> well, we'll say that. It's a teaser. So, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. It's... Yeah, I think I just would have preferred a, a Han Solo movie that wasn't a Han Solo origin movie. Well, and then the whole idea of generally origin movies or generally prequel movies do not do well. Like people don't care. Mm. Like they they don't need to know. Like part of the whole idea of a character is imagining parts of the character that you don't have explained to you. Yeah. Like you don't need to know every single detail of why this character is the way they are. Like that's the whole idea of like what why a lot of people are flipping out about the Joker movie like <laughs> keep the mystery around the Joker. Um, mm-hmm. You don't need to explain what, because when you explain it, it's it's just not as exciting and fun. Like that's why they hide like the movie monster till the very end, because once you know what the movie monster looks like, it's just takes away a bit of it. You know, this is the reason that in my perfect world, 
there are no prequel Star Wars movies. They just went directly to the <laughs> next set. And we're and at this point in my headcanon timeline, we'd just be picking up to like 9, 10, 11. See, I, when I was watching the prequels like earlier this year, I guess, I thought it would have been cool if they designed the prequels as if they were not the fourth, fifth, and sixth movies, but as if they were the first, second, and third movies. So they, they would have like cliffhangers, like... Instead Mm. of having Yoda send someone off, if someone was watching from the beginning, have it ambiguous whether Yoda died or not. And then if someone were watching them in order, they get to episode five and they're like, what? Yoda survived? Like that would have been a neat thing to do that they didn't do. (laughs) Yeah. But yeah. Oh, gotcha. So like in episode three, they would have not... I don't follow you. Uh, (laughs) Like... like, (laughs) (laughs) Just writing them as if they were the first movies instead of oh, gotcha. That makes instead sense, of but... knowing everything that happens in four, five, and six, leave some ambiguity so you can watch them either way. Maybe that's how they should do prequels. Like write them like the other one doesn't exist. Yeah, <laughs> or just don't do prequels. Yeah, or do, like or make it a full on comedy, which they backed away from. <laughs> they got like you got to do something because the stakes. The stakes are never going to be totally there for a movie where you know the well, character's going to live. Yeah. Spoiler alert. Right. <laughs> and that's that's why I almost always advise people to like watch things or read things in the order that they were released instead of like the chronological mm-hmm. order within the universe yeah. because the writers are almost always structuring things with the assumption with the knowledge that like people already know such and such a thing from the universe. Well, thanks, Ian. I'll just get in my time machine and <laughs> go back and redo my whole life. <laughs> I'm kidding. You're you're right. Hindsight, you know, right. 2020. But the thing is, is sometimes you watch a prequel and it takes away from the movie. Like, that, the movie that it's a prequel of is probably a lot better than the prequel itself, so you probably better serve just to watch that movie because it might take away from the better movie some in some way. I eh. Yeah. Who knows? Yeah. Sometimes though, some sometimes they do manage to like explain or flesh out something that um, you know, has been kind of a, a area of debate. Uh that was my really good segue into talking about less than 12 parsecs. <laughs> uh, Cuz one of my least favorite things to hear people like dunk on Star Wars for is like, oh, it's all, it's like George Lucas doesn't even know what a parsec is cuz that's a unit of distance, not a unit of time. Why does it matter how like far the Millennium Falcon went? And um as somebody who lives too much in this universe, <laughs> you know, I always, I always uh, tear people a new one, going like, "Oh man, you don't understand how hyperspace works, and you need to like, you know, you need to navigate at the the shortest possible trajectory, otherwise you're just wasting time and yada yada." Um, and I think that this movie did a pretty good job of like showing why why that mattered um, and why parsecs is like a unit of measurement that actually makes sense in this context. Um, cause they had as silly as like the whole nebula with like the beacons going through it thing was, um, like it, it, it made a, it was a very good visual representation of like, oh yeah, there's a clear path that you have to take when you're making hyperspace jumps. And if you try to cut corners, you're going to wreck yourself. But real quick, what, why was he heralded as one of the best pilots it, it didn't really show much of, <laughs> like, this is why he's the best pilot, because he flew in hyperspace. Oh, yeah, no, I well, I don't think that that has much to do with it, because once you're in hyperspace, you just you just sit back that's, and relax. That's what I mean, like, that, I always thought that this was, like, some sort of, you know, amazing feat that he accomplished, I mean, we, and it was more like, oh, I turned autopilot on and sat back and, <laughs> and watched it fly. Well, I, thi- I think that we saw enough of, like, why he's known as a great pilot in the original trilogy anyway you know because yeah. he was he was flying circles around all these tie fighters uh you know especially when they were in like the asteroid field in episode five um well spoiler flying with, looks sort of like a station wagon <laughs> <laughs> yeah through space like he lost guys in sports cars in a station wagon i also love that they showed how this station wagon became a piece of crap yeah that was good <laughs> Uh, seeing how beautiful it looked whenever mm-hmm. they first step on and knowing what it looks like in episode four 
and cut out my hand. <laughs> I was like, yeah. oh no. So the the uh, I noticed the it didn't have the in the beginning it didn't have the fork in the front. Yes. And it, was that a escape pod in the middle? Yes. Okay, that's they just never bought another escape pod. <laughs> I guess not. <laughs> Han Solo's freaking broke, uh, or he's an idiot, or both. <laughs> but you don't have to worry about wind resistance in space. That's <laughs> true. True. Yeah. That did that, crack I, me up because in New Hope they mentioned like all the escape pods were launched, and I was like, does that even have an escape pod? <laughs> and now I was like, okay, it did. <laughs> I just realized that for the longest time i always assumed that the escape pods came out of like the two circles on the sides yeah. on the did. starboard Be- and and i just figured out why i made that assumption it's because that's where the escape pod is in the lego set mm. oh yes those legos and <laughs> and now that i think about it that wouldn't have been possible because that's where the that's the where gun- the ramp goes down the gunner seats or where where the what no, no, no. The gunner seats are on the top and the bottom. That's right, yeah. Uh, yeah, but like the ramp to get off of the ship when you land is right there on the side. <laughs> Honestly, I, I wouldn't be mad if they made a sequel to Solo. I think they could do more with a sequel since they got all this garbage out of the way. Um, <laughs> they, could, yeah. they could make a really cool sequel out of this because I, I like the actors that played a lot of the characters. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think maybe I could love a sequel and still not like this one very much. <laughs> yeah, I, I think they could build on this and make a better movie because obviously they'd probably choose a better they'd probably choose a director and stick with that director throughout yeah. the entire thing. Well, I don't think that they planned well, when they started this to like <laughs> yeah. switch directors three times. Yeah, yeah. I, I'm not sure if it's under poor management or not, but there's this is like the third Star Wars movie in a row where they've switched directors. I feel like they're getting scared. Like they pick someone that has like a really strong vision for a movie and then they go, Ooh, that, that isn't what we wanted. We want to play it a little bit safer than what you have. Yeah. Which is hilarious <laughs> because in star Wars, you could never make the fans happy. No. So they might as well just <laughs> yeah. go all out the way they want. Oh, you know what they need to do? Um, who's, who's the guy who directed, who created uh, What We Do in the Shadows, and he directed Thor Ragnarok? They need to bring Wait, him Taiki on. Taika Waititi? Yeah. Ta- Taika Waititi? <laughs> yeah. I love his work. <laughs> um, how did you guys feel about the soundtrack in this movie? I, I don't, I don't uh, remember it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that, that was my feeling as well. Which was, like, I noticed the times in the soundtrack where they were very intentionally, like, doing an homage to you know like a, a musical cue from the from the original trilogy yeah. uh but other than that like mm, not really i don't i don't remember most of it i love the strings that they did um it's in the tra- the trailer it's okay. like the heist movie the music that they kind of have as their theme <laughs> <laughs> well it, it, i think it comes back up in the Does film it? but it oh good okay that doesn't have would have been a whole though. Yeah, it would have been a hilarious situation where you know you you were unknowingly uh, praising two steps from hell or something like that. <laughs> but I was gonna say I like the folksy instruments they chose here and there. Mm-hmm. But yeah, it wasn't well, as well crafted as say Rogue One soundtrack because it mm-hmm. was amazing. Was it? Yeah, was yeah. this the one that they fired the um, the composer and and? hired a new one within like two months or was oh, that the they? last jedi oh yeah i think that was the last jedi i remember reading that back in okay back in december i, I, I think th- yeah and they did that for i think they've done, done that for a bunch of movies recently that that's mm. like the thing to do nowadays is just to go in and fire a bunch of people and redo things like uh <laughs> I, I i almost feel like there's almost too much focus testing now with movies yeah, like, like they they just get a bunch of people in a room. Like, yeah, I don't like that. I don't like that. I don't like that. Like movies don't movies don't like take risks as much as they used to. No, guys, what if they were doing A/B testing on us and like all four <laughs> of us saw slightly different versions of the movie? If that's true, mine was the one that had all the trailer music only in it. That's why I, guess, I heard it. I guess I got the bad one. I don't. I don't yeah. enjoy that. <laughs> um do we want to get into spoiler territory Let's now do it. second opinion is supported only by listeners like you who voluntarily donate on our patreon 
Money we make through Patreon will go towards buying products to review and improving the quality of the show. Our content has always been released for free, and always will be, but if you want to go that extra mile, you can get cool rewards like access to The Fringe, our behind-the-scenes after show, access to polls to help us choose future products to review, access to show docs as we're working on them, Nexus stickers, and your name shouted out right here on the show. Not to mention, you will have my eternal gratitude. So if you're interested in helping us take this to the next level, join us at patreon.com slash the Nexus TV. Again, that's patreon.com slash the Nexus TV. All right. Um, I think that the biggest spoiler that I have from this movie, which is a hilarious thing to say, is a piece of music. The, Imper- <laughs> the Imperial March appeared in universe in... <laughs> an advertisement you know a a recruitment video for the imperial <laughs> army and i was like oh my god that is freaking awesome yeah, i'm not sure if that's <laughs> awesome or not but it, I, I i feel like it's awesome i'm going with you i mean if i so i mean john williams obviously knows how awesome he is but like how much more awesome is it to be like oh this piece of music that i like originally composed only intending for it to be understood as like you know this this additive piece to the you know people like it so much it's such a cultural icon now that they decided to insert it into the universe itself like how awesome is My that question though is all the music and all of the star wars movies have always been crappy alien music so where did they get all these brass <laughs> instruments and and like uh, all that there's no there's no indication mm. at all that there's yeah. real musical abilities in the star wars i so i'm trying to remember now actually uh because this was definitely like a cover of Imperial March. It wasn't the exact, you know. Well, like you know, yeah, it wasn't yeah. the exact same track as we heard in the soundtrack back in Episode Five. But I don't remember how different it was. I'll have to watch Han Solo again. Sorry, it's not called Han Solo. It's just Solo. <laughs> Go watch Han. <laughs> Han. They they did address that, didn't they? Yeah, yeah. yeah. that was fun. Actually. They they also address something that I learned for the first time. It's not pronounced Sabak. That's how I've always pronounced it. It's pronounced Sabak. The uh, the card game that they play. Oh, gotcha. <laughs> yeah, is that, is that in any of the other movies? I don't remember the card. Be- it's well, so so I mean, I learned how to pronounce that just by oh, reading because yeah. yeah. you know I read all of the the novels back in the day, <laughs> which are no longer canon. Correct. Yes. Um. I had a very very bad time of it when they announced that they were <laughs> re reshaping canon because I've like what I felt like was uh I felt like a an archaeologist you know who had like spent my entire academic career like <laughs> learning everything I could about a particular ancient civilization and then all of a sudden we make a new discovery some new dig covers <laughs> you know uncover something that completely nullifies everything that I thought that I knew. Sorry about the civilization (laughs) and like i i was so angry because i was like what what am i gonna do with all this knowledge that's useless now (laughs) we found the dead sea holocrons (laughs) turns out dinosaurs are fake Uh. and so that's why like yeah anytime that they do something that i like breaks my understanding of the universe i'm like wait a minute is (laughs) is that breaking what i thought i knew because of the expanded universe or was that something that i knew from the movies and i have to like yeah go s- check my sources <laughs> so uh r- real quick what would you think of the like where he grew up like corellia like yeah so i was really excited that we finally get to see corellia in a movie um and not too surprising that they kind of portrayed it you know where he was from anyway as like a, a crappy area um because, like, you know, it's it's Han. We know that he did not really come from a place of means. Um, but even so, like, the... the um, what, was, what was the main criminal guy's name? Um, Voss? The Red Blades? Voss? Yeah. He, he seemed to be of the opinion that, like, the entire planet was just kind of a crappy place. Um, and I was really surprised about that because, like... From what I know from the expanded universe, uh, <laughs> is the is that like you know there like there are so many movers and shakers, really important people uh, who come from Corellia and they're really proud of their heritage and everything. You know, there was entire section in uh, the the Age of the New Republic where like Corellia was kind of trying to gain independence because they like 
they they you know feel so strongly about their own planet that they're so different and capable. Uh, wow, they're kind of Texas, aren't they? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Maybe the part of the uh, of Corellia they showed in the movie was just like the industrial side of it. Right. But but I mean, that's why I was also surprised that Voss was like, oh, man, you're from Corellia. I'm impressed that you made it out of there because that's a crappy place. You know, it's the <laughs> Star Wars rule of one biome per planet. And they that's just right. have slums. <laughs> yeah. yeah, the whole it's a it's all, slum planet. <laughs> where we're gonna go to the snow planet and then uh, slum planet, uh, McDonald's planet, and uh, yeah. I felt like they could have just cut out that whole opening city, and it probably would have been the same movie. <laughs> yeah, I could. Like, <laughs> like the t- his his it, his uh, tie with that girl. It, I didn't really feel like much of a bond between the two. Like they didn't have much chemistry i didn't feel like there was a lot of chemistry going on between the two i'm gonna take the opposite approach i think they should have spent more time on Corellia. i think it would have been useful to see more of what he was used to you know the the world that he was coming from the assumptions that he makes um because i think that that's going to be more important in, in terms of like shaping who he is later on yeah. than like than what he experiences after getting off of Corellia. Yeah, I think more or um, less would have worked, but as it was now, it just kind of felt a bad beginning. <laughs> yeah, the, the, the chase scene really wasn't that exciting. Mm. Like the vehicle scene, like uh, it was supposed to be exciting opening, but I, I didn't feel like that was like uh, groundbreaking or it, the special effects actually felt kind of off a little bit on that. Mm. Hmm. Like just driving down a pier. Like, I could have gone with, like, the first 30 minutes being cut. Like, even the war. Like, as much as there were things I liked in, in at Corellia and at the, like, war trenches, it didn't even really start going until they were, like, planning the heist for the train. Yeah, I, I kind mm-hmm. of agree. Like, they could have done that. A, it, it seemed like it moved too fast in the beginning. Like, yeah. jump, 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 jump. Like, the character building wasn't there. It was just jump. Jump, and they jump. they even had that scene around the fireplace where everyone explained why I'm doing this mission. That was dumb. <laughs> <laughs> That's like a trope, isn't it? It was a bad one. <laughs> um, speaking of speaking of tropes, uh, when I heard him saying, "I told you not to trust anybody, including myself," I was like, "God damn it, <laughs> not again!" Oh yeah, but. He totally trusted that one woman. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. That's why I said I feel like he was selfish because he put her in a position to basically die. Her, her yeah, job I was mean, like the most da- – I love you, but I'm going to put you in the most dangerous job <laughs> where yeah. if we mess one thing up, you're going to have to blow yourself <laughs> up. Uh, I didn't uh, – that, that was like a very uh, badly botched – I kind of like the twist there, though. Where he thought this uh, group uh, was ba- bad, um, mm-hmm. but then they actually turned mm-hmm. out to mm-hmm. be yeah, yeah, the uh, the Marauders, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. They were like Robin. It's kind of like Robin Hood almost. Yeah, the Marauders were a yeah. group of people that were trying to rob from the Empire to help out the. Were, are, were they the, supposed to be the beginning of the Rebel Alliance? <laughs> so yeah, I haven't I, I haven't watched the Star Wars Rebels uh, TV show yet, um, so I don't know exactly how mm. they're tying into that group, and I'm not even sure actually that that group ties directly into what we know as the Rebellion. <laughs> yeah. But I can tell you that they were definitely trying to tie into uh, Star Wars Rebels with the big reveal at the end. <laughs> uh, <laughs> oh, right. The big reveal that like, oh, it's Darth Maul and Darth Maul's still alive and he's got legs now and he's still got his lightsaber and he turns on his lightsaber and it's double plated and it's Darth Maul. Guys, did you know that it's Darth freaking so, Maul? Oh my God. I actually, when I was first watching that, I went, so is this supposed to be Darth Maul or is this some other Zabrak? His his, his uh, <laughs> twin brother? Or? Yeah, I was like, I don't know. He's kind of changed a little bit. He looks a little older, but he looks it could be a different one. And then he pulled out the lightsaber, and it was double. And I was like, I think that's supposed to tell me it definitely is Darth Maul, but it could be another Zabrak with his lightsaber. I, I actually went through and read the message boards, and like more than half of the people in the message boards were confused about that, that whole scene. 
And then oh people were God. jumping in to explain, well, actually, in the TV show, he survived. <laughs> and uh, he got robot legs. And then he became a crime lord. And I'm <laughs> yep, like, so you yep, have yep. to watch the TV show to know all of this. <laughs> I'm like, well, and that's why I thought it was so strange to see this reveal. Because I was like, okay, I understand like that n- hardly anybody's going to be reading the novels, you know. But like, I felt like since it's in the TV show... It's a visual medium. There's got to be enough people, you know, who are like watching that, who are interested in that, that that information has to have gotten out. Like, but apparently not. Yeah, no, <laughs> like, no nobody knew. Like, maybe they should have well, treated that not as a reveal and just a piece of information. <laughs> but it kind of yeah. like built it up. <laughs> as, guys, this is important. But but he's a <laughs> he's a, a dark lord, and he decides that I'm not gonna like uh, take over the universe or like. I'm just going to be a crime lord. <laughs> I don't understand that line of reasoning. Well, he 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 did try to do make some moves uh, towards the end of the Clone Wars TV show, but then of course Sidious, who's actually in power, you know, uh, really put that down. So I think that uh, that's why he's kind of contenting himself with just like being a crime lord at this point. So is he like the biggest uh, competitor to Jabba the Hutt? Uh, I. Th- Probably at this point, because like uh, he he completely controls like Black Sun and several other uh, groups that used to be separate and competitors and everything. Um, until here's a spoiler for Star Wars Rebels. Uh, he has <laughs> he he goes and finds like <laughs> he goes and finds uh, um, Obi Wan in in the deserts of Tatooine and has like a five second lightsaber battle with him and Obi Wan just murders him. <laughs> And yeah. see, that was what was my problem for seeing him in this movie is I had seen that episode of Star Wars Rebels. It's like, well, I know where he ends up. Yeah. <laughs> so they need to play this a little softer than, hey, I am, in fact, Darth Maul. Like, <laughs> okay, just people that have watched Rebels, like, that's nice. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But you know what you immediately it's, do. It's like a wink and a nod to people who have watched the TV show. Like, you put in all this effort, and we're going to let you yeah. have something in these uh, the movie. They should have shot that from like behind his head, so you just had the horns, and you could have just you mm. know guessed Ooh. if you didn't know. Or they that would have been very Sith Lord. They should have just took right. the animated version of him from the show and put him in. <laughs> <laughs> oh, are they? Oh man, if they start mashing up, if they have a mashup like where they just have like live action mixed with that cartoony animation style, it's gonna be awful. Yeah, they would never. They would never no, do that. No, no, I'm not sure. Uh, well, who knows what they're going to do once they launch the Disney streaming network or whatever that is they're doing. I'm just waiting for them to, like, merge the Star Wars and Marvel universes. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I need Wolverine to have light or <laughs> lightsaber claws. <laughs> I've already um, had some cognitive dissonance, you know, where I see, like... Um, Oh my gosh, Mads Mikkelsen. Wait a minute, wasn't he already in a Star Wars movie? Oh no, that was a Marvel movie. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> Real quick, so let's <laughs> let's talk about Han Solo meeting Chewbacca. What? Yeah, I thought that was part part awesome and part ridiculous. Um, yeah. Can we talk about the fact that like Chewie has definitely eaten at least <laughs> one human being, <laughs> and and I think that that it would have been a perfect reason for Han to call him Chewy. I know. I know <laughs> right. really freaking dark. <laughs> See, I love that because then by the time you get to Last Jedi, it's like, oh, he's grown so much now that he won't even eat a porg. <laughs> he used to eat whole people. But he won't he won't eat a porg, but he already cooked it. It's already yeah. dead. But when they when they threw Han down there to get like <laughs> you think like some sort of giant like uh snail creature or something is going to come out, and it's uh, Chewbacca. And then you have flashbacks to Batman versus Superman, the Martha scene, and uh, <laughs> the one word Martha, and like, my mom's Martha. We're like, oh, let's not fight anymore. <laughs> so in this one, the Martha is, uh, I can ch- talk Wookiee <laughs> out of nowhere. Like, how does yep. he know how to talk Wookiee? He's never talked in any of the other movies, and it, <laughs> it just doesn't make sense. It just... What bothers me more about that is he knew enough of the language to talk to Chewie and translate, but not enough to know how old a Wookiee could be. Yeah, that that's bothers ah. me as well. Because he was so surprised by that. It's like, you should know that? 
That should be in the margins of your Wookiee English eh. Bible or dictionary. You could have picked up a few yeah. words somewhere and not gotten knowledge. Isn't it cooler, though, that he just knows how to understand him just because he spent so much time with him? Like, yes. I kind of just assumed he knew how to talk to Chewie because he spent so much time with him and he gained that relationship. Like, I, I never thought in my head that Han could actually talk Wookiee. Mm-hmm. And say that would have been a better arc if they spent the whole movie not understanding each other as an odd yes. couple. Yeah. What if, better. Like, what if they got, like, chained together and then they, like, have no choice but to... Exactly. I was actually picturing that same oh. thing in my head. Guys, what if they, like, were chained together and then they comically run off in different directions? And, <laughs> oh. That was in the movie. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I just, I did love him being dragged. Just, I don't know, just that general, um, oh yeah, you are chained to a giant creature. Mm-hmm. I mean, that was good. Sorry. There's nothing you yeah. can do. Yeah. <laughs> He's one size category above you, so. <laughs> what'd you, what'd you yeah. think of uh, there being a another over the top robot, L3? Um, oh man, I loved her, and I loved the fact that they are bringing like the whole droids droid rights issue into the main movies because that's always been kind of on the on the periphery. <laughs> uh, you know, it's it's been brought up several times in the expanded universe, mm-hmm. um, but they haven't. You know, and and even like I did, it did not occur to me when I saw like the robot fights there. At, you know, I was just like, oh, yeah, Robo Wars. Yeah, cool. You know, I, I run a, 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 the robotics team here at school. Like, whatever. Yeah. Like, make them, they're, they're just machines. Make them fight. But then, you know, like, when she started talking about uh, freeing all these robots and stuff, I was like, oh, that, damn, that's dark. Well, yeah. then, real quick, Ian, <laughs> um, I find this interesting. Uh, well, in the original Star Wars movie, there was a the creepy scene of the uh, uh, the small, what are the guys, the, the chap? Jawas, the Jawas. Jawas, thank you. Um, the mm-hmm. Jaw was like tearing apart. It was like a scary, like a uh, horror movie scene of them tearing <laughs> apart the robots. Like, yeah, you're, you're right. The robots are treated terribly in the Star Wars universe. There's um, also the mm-hmm. weird droid torture in Episode Six. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that well, the fact no that purpose. someone took the time to program pain receptors yeah. <laughs> into a droid so that you could torture yeah. it. I can totally see that being a desirable thing for like the you know a droid to. Re- be functional for a long time because like if it can feel its own pain and it has like the emotional drive to avoid that kind of pain then it's going to last longer real quick though why are the robots in this movie this is a prequel to the other star wars movies why why are they so advanced compared to later on like a lot of the robots in this one and the robots in uh, rogue one they can talk better walk better (laughs) they just do better things in the robots later on in the series i feel like i'm i mean it's probably the same answer as to like why can r2d2 why does he have rockets in the prequels but not in the in the original trilogy and the answer is because the original trilogy was made in the 1970s and 80s yeah, that's, true. <laughs> that's true my um, head canon is that no one will serve their kind here and so they're just going decades without any maintenance at all they did. Oh man, they did reuse that line. Uh. <laughs> hey, did, uh. did anybody else find it weird though that L three used the term "woke"? Oh, that was. Oh man, um, L three. Hmm, how do I feel about I, that? I, I just actually. feel like a, in a galaxy far, far away. I don't. A long time ago, I, I might add. I don't think they're using terminology from like modern day English. Like, stay woke, robots. I, I, I agree. I don't like that. Um, and that like that gets into one of the things that I don't like in the uh, the other the the uh, the Last Jedi and the Force Awakens is that like their their speech patterns feel very contemporary, right? It just fe- it feels like John Boyega running around in a stormtrooper costume, um, whereas like in the original trilogy, like you hear stories about the actors complaining to George Lucas that like, nobody talks like this. This is so hard to say because like, I just like, it's so weird. Uh, and that, that was perfect because it, it, it is a completely <laughs> different galaxy. Yeah. People, people just talk different yeah, there. They're, yeah. They're, um, they're trying to make it too relatable. I feel like, um, they could have yeah. just said, they, I, I don't like sand sands course. And it gets all <laughs> over the place. 
<laughs> they they did acknowledge uh, a little bit of the whole like like yeah Star Wars movies um, traditionally have had like very clunky dialogue when um, Beckett kept making these like cultural references and Han was like I have no frame of reference for these <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about <laughs> which was I think a nice a nice little nod to the fact that like we as Earthlings have no frame of reference for like what's a nerf herder. <laughs> yeah. And stuff like that. It's true. But by God, they're going to make three games and a comic about Nerf Herding so that they can fill <laughs> in that blank spot for you. Yeah, they will. They will. I actually found out recently that my roommate thought it was Nerve Herter. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, oh, what? That's, that's even better. But he's better. just gone most of his life thinking it was that. <laughs> Cause, and then his resp- I was like, how did you not know? And he was like, how would I think it would be a thing that doesn't exist Herder? <laughs> yeah i just wish on the on these different planets that they would have more wildlife and mm-hmm. more like mm-hmm. treacherous bits because in these new movies like it feels like a lot of these planets are pretty desolate well it's always been kind of troublesome that like quentin was saying these planets are all one biome yeah. <laughs> it's like is this like really crappy terraforming or uh are you guys just really awful at environmental management? Yeah, so in this planet, we I mean, in this movie, we went to uh, the slum planet and the uh, Lawrence of the Ra- Lawrence of Arabia planet. And we had ice planet for a bit. And uh, oh, yeah. And Kessel. Yeah. Kessel, which was not like what I thought Kessel was like. I thought Kessel was like a loose collection of asteroids that kind of, you know, had just enough gravity, but didn't really have a good atmosphere mm-hmm. or anything. Um so that's another piece of knowledge <laughs> that I need to wipe from away from my brain. I was say going through Kessel, that was one moment that I really perked up because I played a Star Wars RPG campaign that started in Kessel. <laughs> so I kind of turned to my wife and during the movie, like, I broke out of Kessel once. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> I did it. <laughs> what do you guys think of the guy who, who who played Han? I thought he did good. Yeah. I think he did as well as... They allowed him to. Yeah, I think so too. Yeah. You know, like it, it's one of those things where the first five minutes, I was like, eh, well, I don't know what's going on here." But then after that, I just stopped noticing. He definitely did a better Han than Harrison Ford in Episode Six. <laughs> in Episode <laughs> Six? What? Yeah. Or do you mean Seven? I mean where episode he died. Six. Yeah. You mean Episode Six? Okay. <laughs> the- Can you unpack that a little bit for I, me? I feel like he was phoning it in by Episode Six. Well, he he always said he never liked Star Wars. Yeah. <laughs> but there's the, oh that's so that's so Harrison yeah, Ford I love Harrison Ford he can crash my plane any day <laughs> <laughs> oh dude he's apparently like narrating an Omni film uh, about mm. airplanes what <laughs> when's this yeah. coming out I don't know I saw a preview for it today when I went to the Omni theater oh god <laughs> I need to drive to Indianapolis that's the closest Omni Max theater to my house <laughs> oh on the actor, I did feel like he had some rough moments where you could almost tell he was getting no extra direction. Because yeah. <laughs> yeah. there are a couple moments where he seemed to be really like, is this the right? Did I do that right? I did appreciate, though, that he did grow as far as becoming a little more assertive as a character. I, I would, Yeah, definitely. I, I would like to know what scenes were reshot and what weren't. Like, mm. like what yeah. was the redone parts? I, I didn't really see many cracks in that though i didn't see many spots where I'm like yeah this seems like it's a different movie like i i feel like they did a decent job blending it all together i i, I went into this movie thinking it was going to be a huge train wreck and i came out like well oh, wow I was, i'm surprised it's decent see for me as soon as they left the snow planet that's where i felt like there was a we hopped rails onto a different movie as far as like direction felt very different suddenly mm-hmm. the timing and pacing of scenes felt different and yeah, that was the end of the Firefly segment. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's true. Yeah, the yeah. You're talking about once they met Lando, it turned into a different movie. Yeah, yeah. They they could have used Lando more, I think. Yeah, I could see that. Yeah, he, he was a good he was a good addition though. I, I I liked how he just kind of bailed. Yeah, I think that was my favorite moment of the movie when Is Han it? makes that big bluff and then. Lando is just, I'm out. <laughs> I am really curious to know 
since this happens six years before uh, episode four, like when Han Solo in episode five, which is a year later, so that's like seven years between those two movies, uh, when Han says, oh yeah, Lando and me, we go way back. Like, have they met each other at all? Have they spoken at all in between like Han getting the Millennium Falcon from him and when they land oh, they on Bespin. Had they, they botched that. It's a big galaxy. They botched that relationship. I feel like they could have done a lot more with like building rapport with each other. They they were more like uh, um, the same person almost. Yeah, they were compete. They're competing mm. for money and uh, I I don't yeah women, women. yeah basically, <laughs> which I felt. And for did, capes. Did you feel like the whole se- uh, sexual like chemistry thing was odd? Like as far as him trying to like constantly make out with her on the on the Falcon. Oh, I was I was very very put off by the fact that like Han is rude enough to try to make out with somebody uh, in somebody else's like cape closet <laughs> and then suggest that they go and have <laughs> sex in his bed. I was like, what? Who does this? <laughs> Who? Why would you? Yeah, he kept he kept bringing up like, "Hey, is this gonna lead to something later?" (laughs) He's like the worst roommate you can imagine. No, I've had worse, but I guess I guess that's Han Solo. So, (laughs) yeah, they didn't do a great job of making him a super likable character. (laughs) (laughs) I mean, I've never thought of him as a super likable character. Like rewatching the uh, the original trilogy, um, whenever I see like him and leia having you know kind of a cute moment i I just i look at her and i'm like you could do better than this don't don't settle for han <laughs> but at least han was i was really taken i was gonna say i was really taken back when he was trying to make out in the cape closet <laughs> and then rewatching empire strikes back i was like oh this is just his mo like princess leia <laughs> was just the first to like settle down with him after it <laughs> uh yeah, it just didn't seem uh, PC politically correct in the uh, modern modern era of like don't harass people. I don't know on the on the line. Yeah, I mean at at least at least in this context, he could be reason he could reasonably expect that like oh we've got history we have chemistry we you know we tried to escape from uh, Karelia together you know uh, our plan was to like end up together and settle down together and you know but like by the time he's trying to like get it on with leia the, the she you know she just was repeatedly rebuffing him and like he just would not take a hint yeah i i, I just feel like this movie so, would have been a lot better if they would have just uh went with uh maybe a job of the hut type of thing where he's like working for job of the hut like early on mm. Mm. i think narratively the the heist itself and the way they have it structured and the red dawn is fine if they had made each heist lead into the next one no nah, yeah they didn't yeah because and this it just seemed like a series of short stories about single heists that were you know bad. what that would have been really good i read some post where someone suggested <laughs> what if the movie was just han and lando playing that game of cards and they were just telling stories and that was the whole movie <gasps> and i was like was man that sounds so good out. Yeah, yeah. That that. Oh, and then and then and then he could have said, like, "Oh, that could be a real story," or they could just be bragging. Yeah, exactly. That, so they could have used the narrative uh, tool that they had in the Tales from the Borderlands mm. game, where you've got like two unreliable narrators <laughs> telling a story and then contradicting each other, and we get to see the same scenes from like different people's perspectives with like their lies being shown on Isn't the that screen kinda, uh like u- usual suspect style almost that is a movie that i know that i must see but i have <laughs> not yet but that's kind of how it's done they tell the story like through like interviews okay yeah hmm. so they that's a good idea wow that that would have made it so much better i think yeah yeah because I, I think they kind of needed that element of like exaggeration a little bit yeah that would have made the Kessel fight so much better if Lando was talking about <laughs> carrying L3 in his arms by himself. And then you'd go yeah. to Han Solo's version and they're like dragging him and L3 out. <laughs> yeah. Oh, like they're telling the same story, but each one has a different, like, <laughs> yeah, mm-hmm. that would have been awesome. 
And then the, I like this. We should go and write <laughs> their this. Their friendship would have been <laughs> better established as well. Like, yeah, they they spent more time with each other. I can definitely see them uh, hanging out on a cloud city together. Yeah. <laughs> See, what I think would be great for their relationship is if if there's a second movie, make it like, this is Boba Fett's movie, but he's hunting Lando and Han, and so then you could see them to, working to together like protect again. protect themselves. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and make the next films, like, looking at them from a different person's viewpoint, but seeing them work together again. Yeah. So, uh, uh, but but again, the, yeah, this this movie wasn't terrible, it, just, it was just middle of the road and I, and I wish it would have been more than that yeah yeah if it had chosen either side of the road it would have been better for it yeah it it, bom- it bombed like it was a really bad movie like it it basically made money like uh the money it made is like yeah everybody hated this but a lot of people i've talked to like they i i haven't talked to one person that hated it yet everybody has been like yeah it's pretty good or <laughs> i loved it so uh until now when you talk to daniel yeah <laughs> But I still don't feel like Sorry. Daniel hated it, hated it. See, no, I'm the one that didn't like it. At all? At all? Not oh. one iota? Well, I mean, it had good moments, but I, there's a lot of things in it that remind me of a better movie it could have been. And yeah, right. I feel like it's being held up by the Star Wars strings. Um, last thing that I want to touch on here for Solo is, um, did they really like introduce Cthulhu into this universe and then like trick him into getting sucked up by a black hole like i think that was that was the most like out there crazy giant <laughs> monster like space monster that we have ever seen in the universe i did not understand a, a, a lick of what was going on in that scene <laughs> I th- it was totally unnecessary uh yeah, i no. didn't i did I didn't need the stakes to include like big tentacles that are going to devour the millennium falcon <laughs> Do you think like he it got was... sucked into Lord of the Rings into the uh, the <laughs> lake and? Uh... <laughs> they need to speak friend to get out of the Kessel Run. <laughs> I d- I was really really nervous when they showed this monster popping up and like and w- like Savannah turned to me and she was like, "Is that the Maw?" And I'm like, "That had better not be the Maw because the Maw is supposed to be you know a collection of five uh, black holes that are in like geosynchronous orbit around them each other." And uh, and then very thankfully, the, like a, a character in the movie was like, "Is that the Maw?" And they're like, "No, that's not the Maw." <laughs> <laughs> See, yeah. I'm trying to remember in the Jedi Knight Academy books, don't they mention monsters around Kessel? Uh, it's been a long time since I read it. I don't know. But I mean like, you know, big giant space monsters are have been done before in Star Wars, so that wasn't yeah. out of place. But well, what are um, they what are they eating? Uh well that I, well, that's never really been addressed. about like void breathers or something weird. <laughs> I think it's usually the explanation is like they're they're silicon based yeah. uh life forms, so not carbon based. And why that allows them to survive in the vacuum of space, I have no idea. I, I did like the one from the original Star Wars movies where it was the, in the, the giant slug. Yeah, I love that. That was that was great. That 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 is one of the most memorable scenes. Like they get out of the ship. Like we're not in a cave. We're in mm-hmm. a slug. <laughs> like it's hard to top <gasps> stuff like that. Oh, is that why Han was the only one who like even considered the fact that they might not be in a cave? <laughs> was because he's seen one like a giant space alien before? Another origin point. Well, oh. Han's been around. Han's been yeah. around. Especially so in the cape closet. <laughs> he's He's been around. Oh, the cape closet. <laughs> I would have liked gotta... if there was like a Batman cape back there somewhere, just like hidden in the back. <laughs> <laughs> that would have been great. <laughs> just Lando has like an entire closet for his cosplay. <laughs> <laughs> like a... a sp- weird like if they show underneath the ship there's like a weird sex dungeon down there as well like yeah yep that would be quite the turn for star wars well i mean he he was <laughs> talking about the him and the robot sounded like they were in a relationship uh well the robot was making it sound like they were in a, I know, a relationship creepy, i don't know what it was like from lando's perspective but he was like crying when the robot died yeah yeah well, that, see, that gives credence to the theory of what she was saying with the Mm -hmm. he's into me but i'm not really that into him yeah (laughs) what bothers me about that is then he gives her up to 
Han later. And it's like, well, did you just trade your girlfriend in a card game? <laughs> like, I know you're kind of a, you know, oh, yeah, a little they, on the, the yeah, rough side. Yeah. But. And that, that's how they explain how the ship has this crazy navigation system is like, oh, because mm-hmm. the robot has this great navigation system, Brian, and it's yeah. in the ship now. Which uh, is, a, oh my gosh, is, is this why C-3PO like said... Uh, yeah. I don't know where your ship learned to communicate because she's just like so yeah. like like he's so proper and she's like all sarcastic and uses words like woke. Yeah. <laughs> that oh, coming dear. from the 70s he has never heard before. <laughs> but did did I hear that? Did I really hear woke? I keep thinking I did, but did I really hear woke? And I'm going to have to rewatch it. Uh, yeah, I keep she, to go see it again. I, maybe I'm she meant read the quotes. Sorry, I talked to her. Oh no! I just meant maybe she meant stay woke, as in don't go into hibernation mode, robots. <laughs> oh, that's pretty good. See, All there's right. just a lot of articles that I find when I Google Star Wars Solo woke that are like, is this the uh, first woke so- Star Wars? Yeah. <laughs> oh, God. So I don't think Google's going to be helpful on that. <laughs> yeah. So they they um, have not released like the full transcript from the movie yet. <laughs> oh, I'm sure it's out there. I just need to go look for it. <laughs> Control F woke. <laughs> uh, all right, final thoughts. If you like Star Wars, go see this movie. If you don't like Star Wars, don't go see this movie. <laughs> <laughs> I don't yeah, know. that's that's very true. I don't think it has much to offer for somebody who is not invested in Han Solo. Huh? Go figure. <laughs> Weird. <laughs> yeah, I feel like this is the. I feel like this is the most n- niche of all star wars movies have, that has, that have come out because mm. like it it really like uh hammers it down like because what if you didn't like han from the original trilogy like oh i never liked han i'm not gonna see this new movie <laughs> yeah so like it, it's like taking one character out of uh I, you know that i mean i i didn't like han in the original trilogy that much but um i feel like han in this movie was enough of like a blank slate <laughs> that it he didn't bug me in this movie, for the most part. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I I did have a moment at the beginning where he was being very quippy, and I went, "Oh, I don't think I like Han Solo the character." <laughs> 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 like it's the same moment I had when the the Tom Holland Spider Man trailer came out. I went, this looks really good, but also I think this reminds me I don't really like Spider Man <laughs> now that he's done well. <laughs> yeah. All these years, I just really like Tobey Maguire. <laughs> oh no. I th- I think maybe I think maybe Han Solo is just supposed to be a side character. He's supposed to be like with other characters, like he's part of a team. And ah, uh, sure. Yeah, I, I don't think he's he's enough of a character to stand on his own. Well, maybe that's why the movie feels a little weak, is they're trying to hang so much on him Yeah, when it's all the people around him that are interesting in the film. Yeah, I, well, I, got, I, I want more of uh, this guy, but uh, keep getting Han. Like, Amelia like, Clark, <laughs> Clark's character seems really cool, and she just keeps getting like shoved literally into a cape closet. <laughs> it's like, wait, come back. Talk more. Yeah, you know zero about her. He, he, she kind of just says, "Yeah, bad things happen to me. Yeah. Imagine what you what you will." I think that, um, man, if Chewbacca was already 190 years old by the time this movie happened, imagine how much like material they can get out of his backstory. <laughs> Gosh, we go back 120 years to his birth. But they yeah. better be all in Wookiee with no subtitles. Oh yeah, for sure, for sure. So those movies will be great. <laughs> I can tell you the Chewbacca solo miniseries that Marvel put out a while back, not great. (laughs) Like, maybe it would have been really good as an animated thing where you didn't have to read grunts, (laughs) but as a comic, not so great. Yeah. (laughs) I'm thinking just with Star Wars movies, less is more. Maybe the less we have, the better it will be. Yeah. Less in terms of what? Like, a, do we need one every year? Like, it feels like... Oh, uh, yeah, if we, for sure. If we get... I think their original plan was to have two a year. They're going to have, like, a... Oh, gosh. The plan, I think at one point they were saying we're going to have, like, a uh, anthology movie in the summer, and then in the winter we'll have, like, a numbered movie. You know what that reminds me of? Um, when they sh- shut down uh, Stargate SG-1, 
and their plan originally was like, all right, we're just going to start making like like direct to DVD movies kind of thing, uh, and we're going to make two of them a year. And holy cow, That's bad. Would, that would have been an insane plan. <laughs> well, I mean, don't you, don't you think that a Star Wars movie needs a little bit more time in the oven, like a little bit more like TLC, like a little bit I, more care? Like, they, I think maybe if they had like less connections between all of them. Like, start spreading them out in the universe. Yeah, mm. that, that's what I'm kind of excited about, this new uh, trilogy that um, yeah. Ryan, jo- Ryan Johnson's making, which he might not end up making now that they're getting scared with this box office. Oh. Well, that's the thing, is, like, when when Disney bought Marvel and wiped away all of the old canon, um, I was a little bit excited because I was like, oh, like... Before, I had no hope of ever being able to catch up on everything that had been written for this universe, you know? And maybe, maybe now that, you know, I've seen everything that's in canon and I just need to keep up on the the stuff that they're coming out with from now on, maybe I'll be able to do it. Nope. No. Not at all. Not even close. Goodness gracious. (laughs) There's too much content in the world. I am but one man. Yes, too much. And here we are, making more content. Yeah. Uh, all right, so I think that's it that we've got for uh, Solo, a Star Wars movie. Nope, a Star Wars story. Ah, I can't even remember. A Star Wars tale. <laughs> um, so, fellas, where can people find you on the internet? You can find me at the Cinemike on Twitter and Instagram, and I will start be I'll start putting out new episodes of Cinemike soon. Um, I'll be, this will probably be on there as well, possibly. Fantastic. Y'all can find me at Guare on Twitter, and then Quentin and I are both on doubleissue.show.com. What? Sorry. Oh. No. Oh. <laughs> I, I beefed it. Doubleissue.show for our podcast. Yeah. And I'm just at Quentin Pongratz. And I'm Ian Arbuck. Uh, I'm on Twitter as Ian Arbuck. And uh, this has been a production of The Nexus TV. You can find us on Twitter at The Nexus TV. You can send us an email at TV at gmail.com. Uh, and you can find all of our shows at uh, thenexus.tv. This episode is released under a Creative Commons Attribution license, so feel free to take any part of it and use it however you like, as long as you link back to the original, which should be thenexus.tv slash SO43. Uh, if you want to discuss this episode with other listeners, you can go to our subreddit at r slash TV. And uh, if you've got ideas for other things that we can review on this show, because we do not only TV, sh- uh, whoa, TV shows, movies, <laughs> uh, but also like electronics and apps and uh, all kinds of nerdy things, um, let us know. And if you've got something that you want to review for us, then uh, we would love to have you on as a guest. Can I review the YouTube video Too Many Cooks? <laughs> no. <laughs> no one should. <laughs> As long as you do it shot by shot. (laughs) (laughs) Thanks for listening, everybody. Have a good one.